lips.com. And this is March 22nd, 2016. Well, tomorrow is supposed to be the full moon and we're going to have some kind of eclipse. So, you know, be really wary about the energies going on and do your best to keep yourself centered and happy and in the light. And don't let things bother you because the energies are high. Well, tonight I am going to talk about some of the really great things that has happened Against Monsanto, Monsanto's kind of losing the battle. Yay, light workers. So I'm going to share with you some of the positive things that are happening uh, against Monsanto and also share the complete history of Monsanto, the world's most evil corporation, along with um if we can and have time, a couple power prayers to keep that Monsanto, putting them in a position of harmlessness, energy going. And I actually was going to do a whole show on Monsanto. And then the other day, as happens, um, a spirit put something right in my face. And it was one of those, oh, my God, I've got to check this out. Well, are you aware that there's over 200,000 homeless missing. And I would like to know, where did they go? Now, I'm sure most of you, probably 99.99 of you, isn't aware that there's homeless missing. I certainly wasn't until a couple of days ago. I mean, why would we? It's not really our world, and most people don't focus on the homeless at all. You know, they're busy with their lives. Well, it is important. And when you're working on enlightenment, you have to look at the people that need it the most. And we're going to set the reptilians inside and look at the homeless. And, you know, when I posted something on Facebook that mentioned that there was over 200,000 people missing, I had, you know, a couple of people go, well, who cares? You know, they're probably all on drugs. And I replied, that is certainly what we are conditioned to think, isn't it? That people that are homeless are all bad people and they're all on drugs and, you know, so they don't deserve any help. Well, you know, judgy, not, and if you've not experienced being homeless, then wow, you better keep your mouth shut and really, really, you know, rethink it and look at it differently because you can be homeless in a heartbeat. You know, that e- that it is that easy. Now, think about this for a minute. You know, when you think that just people that do drugs are homeless because that's not true. You know, how many Americans are living from paycheck to paycheck? And if they were to suddenly lose their jobs within two or three months, they would be homeless. Now, the average American ends up borrowing money to go to college and to buy a house. And if you borrow $200,000 to buy an average home, by the end of 30 years, you will have paid the bank almost $600,000 nearly three times what you originally borrowed. Now suddenly millions of Americans who have worked their whole lives are losing their jobs and homes because of this recession and having already paid the banksters over a half million dollars for their homes, which were only worth 200,000 to begin with. Do you think it's right that these Rothschild bankers should be allowed to come with the sheriff and their Nazi field marshals And put those four poor families along with all of their belongings out in the street. And if you know your history, this is what Hitler did to the Jews during World War II. So what if you discovered that these bankers lied to us and never lent us any of their money in the first place, that they simply created this money out of thin air with a few entries in their books, which costs them no more than a little bit of black ink on a piece of paper. How does it make you feel that over the last four years of Obama's presidency, the banks have been allowed to steal 
nearly $6 trillion from the American working class, everything that they have saved in their homes, checking savings and retirement funds, and the courts just turn a blind eye to all their fraud, thievery, and crimes and do nothing about it. And the media wants us to believe that these poor people deserve what's happening to them because they bought homes that they could not afford. But the truth is, you know, this isn't just happening to a few of them. It's happening to all of us. Now, if you're wondering what Obama and our fascist government is planning to do with the millions of unemployed American families who have lost their homes and apartments, New York and California are now offering them voluntary shelter in FEMA prison camps. Things have not been this bad since we had to fight the Nazis during World War II, with millions of American families losing their homes and extend, of extending unemployment to help these desperate families keep a roof over their heads. And as the weather gets colder, President Obama is preparing to, you know, one day declare a national emergency. Now, our government wants to spend billions of dollars to forcefully move millions of homeless Americans who are now living on the streets and in tents throughout the United States into FEMA camps one day. Now, the camps are real, and so are the coffins and the mass graves that they have dug. Now, yeah, once they've got the homeless in there, it's not long before they put anyone else in there. Now, the American citizens can also be stripped of all their rights, beaten, tortured, and held indefinitely without a hearing or trial, and the American press and legal counsel won't be allowed into these camps to report on what's really going on behind closed doors. Now, ex-President George Bush proudly admits that he personally okayed the use of coercive interrogation techniques that many say are torture. Bush says, Damn right, I approve waterboating. And that was in the Washington Post. Now, according to the recent census, 18.6 million homes are now vacant in the United States. 23 million people have lost their homes. And the banksters are now filing around 300,000 new foreclosures every month. You know, there's a lot of people that are behind 90 days or more on their mortgages. And the bank, they don't care. Now, what happens again to all those people that are on the street? Well, when I did some research, I discovered that People were talking about homeless people disappearing since 2007. And I can personally attest to what the city of L.A. did in 1987-88 when the city of L.A. literally swept off all the homeless off the street and they put them near the railroad tracks, tracks Outside of, just outside, you know, well, it was in the the railroad tracks, um, not far from the downtown district in L.A., and they called it Tent City. And it was made up of tents, and it was dirty. You know, they just wanted the homeless off the street. Now, what was the end result after that being set up a year, a year and a half? What did L.A. do? Well... Some of the people, they offered them jobs in other states and offered to bus them there. And, you know, I'm, a lot of people I talked to decided to take it because they really wanted jobs. They didn't like what they were there, where they were at. And I wondered if those people ever did get to those places. Now, other people, they simply gave them hotel vouchers for a week or two weeks in a month and that was it now that gets you off the street temporarily but then you're right back on it and if you've never been homeless and you know you can be car homeless and there's many ways and degrees of being homeless but if you put yourself out on the streets in downtown anywhere with no car 
I will say if you can maintain and keep it together more than three days, you are an incredible person. And what I did with the homeless working with them was one of the hardest times of my life, especially to live it and not be it and maintain my connection to source. Because all those people that are homeless and have kind of lost it mentally, they're just simply disconnected from the creator. And when they become awakened spiritual beings, all of a sudden, They see a purpose or many purposes in life and they see new possibilities and they have that energy to move forward and make something out of themselves. And for me personally, after working with the homeless a year and a half, I got really burned out. So it's not easy at all. It's one of the hardest jobs you can have. And I realized for me that I can do more for the homeless on an energy level than I can on a one-on-one. So I really honor those people that actually can work with the homeless every day. You know, they are angels. So I came across this article, and it says, Los Angeles homeless are mysteriously disappearing despite recession. Now, the L.A. County's homeless population has dropped 38% since 2007, despite a deep economic recession, says the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority. The drop in the homeless population of the downtown L.A. Skid Row area is even greater. Authorities report that the Skid Row area lost nearly 50% of its homeless population or from 22,030 homeless in 2007 to 11,093 in 2009. In other words, approximately 10,937 indigenous, mostly drug addicted and mentally sick persons have disappeared from L.A. Skid Row in two years. This is at the time when the Skid Row population should have at least doubled Because of the major economic downturn, say, homeless population experts. Now, I want you to listen to this and then, you know, make your own decisions. Now, there have been a few theories proposed that attempt to explain the phenomena. One in particular is bizarre and macabre, but plausible. In 1992, the New York Times, in an article titled, Columbia shuts medical school in body purchase case reported that the Colombian government had closed a medical school where security guards were said to have murdered homeless people and sold the bodies to the free university in Barranquilla for body parts and medical experimentation. The police believed university security guards clubbed street people to death and sold their bodies to the medical school for about $200 each. The guards refused to unlock the gates when officers came and forced their way inside and found a horrifying sight. Ten freshly killed cadavers of homeless men and women and body parts of at least 14 more victims, all ready for study by medical students. I mean, is this sick? Now, unfortunately, the University of California at L.A., UCLA, was involved recently in a similar scandal. In 2004, Henry Reed, UCLA's director of the Willed Body Program, was arrested for selling body parts that were meant for university medical research to body parts dealer Ernest Nelson. The body parts dealer confessed that he paid Reed over $700,000 for permission to go into the UCLA body freezer and hack about 800 cadavers into pieces to take their parts. God, is this a bad Halloween story or what? Now, one cadaver can produce as much as two Hundred thousand dollars when cut up and individual body parts and tissues are sold to the pharmaceutical and medical industries. 
The hospital removing the organ is paid a fee. The transportation company that brings the chilled organs to the intended recipient makes a bundle. And of course, the surgeons, doctors, and hospitals actually performing the organ transplant make a small fortune. In all, one donated organ, such as a human liver, might generate well over a hundred thousand dollars in revenues for everyone involved. Well, that is everyone except the donor. Now, the USA human organ transplant history has become putrefied to the core. It is now under the control of an organ mafia consisting of cadaver hunters, surgeons, nurses, and hospital administrators whose sole purpose is to maximize their profits by selling transplantable organs and tissues to the highest bidder. The ultimate victims are the poor indigenous patients who are tricked into signing papers to receive treatment and because of lack of money are bypassed for the expensive treatment and, oops, end up dying. The organ snatchers then victimize their bodies and their organs sold for the highest price to be used in the bodies of their wealthy patients. The homeless and indigenous you know, if no one claims the body, have always been used for organs and research. What's left for burial usually amounts to what's left on your plate after a turkey dinner. Ernest Nelson provided documentation to authorities that in, indicated that UCLA Medical Center administrators and high-level UCLA executives had knowledge of the clad Stein sale of body parts and approved it. It appears that Henry Reed, two other employees under his supervision, and others at the UCLA Medical Center got away with trafficking in body parts by keeping some of the donated cadavers off the books. Henry Reed and the others may have been accepting cadavers that they never recorded. Now, can what occurred at the Free University at Barranquilla in Colombia occur here? Certainly, criminals in the USA have killed for a lot less than $200,000 per victim. The Skid Row homeless are certainly easy targets. No one knows them. They have no family to miss them, and they sleep usually in dark alleys. Let's see. 10,937 winos, hobos, druggies, crazies disappear times 200,000. And, you know, if you can't do the math, that comes to over, are you sitting down, $2 billion. Now, will the LAPD investigate? Oh, probably not. To the contrary, the LAPD has been carrying out a vicious campaign against the homeless and people living in their vehicles. The latest round of attacks is focused on finding an excuse to confiscate any vehicle that someone is suspected of sleeping in. Now, this is from um, Homeless 3,000, approximately 3,000 homeless have disappeared from San Francisco. Where have the homeless gone? The city, it turns out, has absolutely no idea. Thousands have disappeared from its welfare roles, and the Department of Human Services, which administers the program, has no idea where they've gone. Now, Again, the Americas disappeared in the homeless of the big city. The homeless of the big city. Now, Wayne Madsen reported that the homeless in our major cities all over the United States, like New York and Atlanta, are starting to disappear without a trace. In Washington, D.C., where you could always see homeless people as you walk down the streets in the park and grassy nooks, recently they have un begun to disappear in large numbers. These homeless men and women were once familiar faces to Washington's elite working class. 
but now they're gone. From Lafayette Park across Pennsylvania Avenue, from the White House to Virginia Avenue, across from the State Department and Franklin Square, amid the city's glass and steel towers, housing D.C.'s power elite, to Tony Georgetown. Many homeless people, both those truly down on their luck and those who are mentally ill, have totally disappeared. As one Washington social worker told a newspaper editor, these people have simply vanished. Last August, John McDermott, one of the AVID spokespersons for the homeless who protested and complained about the shutting down of homeless shelters and the gradual disappearance of the homeless has now also vanished. D.C. officials in charge of the homeless are very tight-lipped when asked about the fate of unaccounted for homeless in the city. One D.C. official said that with the opening up of the federal camps and a high demand for any useful body parts by the lucrative transplant industry, he feared the worst may have befallen some of D.C.'s invisible residents. In Columbus, Ohio, in October of 9th, 2010, most of their significant homeless camps have disappeared in the last past 10 months. When homeless persons began going missing mysteriously from the streets of Kansas City, a local detective calls the BAU to investigate the disappearances. So every year, approximately 200,000 people disappear in the U.S., and no one seems to notice or care. Stories of illegal body parts and organ harvesting are springing up all over the country. Dozens of indictments, arrests, and investigations are underway. Stories of funeral homes, doctors, medical colleges, hospitals, morgues, refrigerators full of body parts, etc., all guilty of secretly selling body parts, tissue bones, and organs for millions of tax-free dollars. Wake up, everybody. This is like selling drugs to have slaves and guns. It's really big business. A doctor can make as much as $150,000 for doing one transplant. Our government censored news agencies have put a huge effort into keeping this a secret and making the general public think that these kinds of horrors could only happen in third world countries like China. Right. Well, let's talk about China. Now, in China, orphanages are stacked with unwanted baby girls because they can only have one you know, child, right? And they're going to pick a boy to carry on their name. So child's right activists from the West posing as curious tourists claimed thousands upon thousands of unwanted baby girls are warehoused in what the government officially calls orphanages, waiting to be slaughtered for their young organs. In the report, it indicates that China's harvest organs from millions of toddlers and infants throughout China The Illuminati's call for globalization, a new world order, population reduction, one-child policies, forced abortions, has increased the sale of human body parts in China, Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Myanmar, Philippines, and the Vietnam. Here in the United States, it has become shockingly clear that the illegal chop shops are no longer confined to just selling stolen automobiles. There is, in fact, an underground network of human body part traders who utilize their connections with hospitals and university medical centers, which provide them with all the false documentation and paperwork to legitimize and cover up these gruesome mass murders. Our secret government is an expert at producing false documents 
which is an art, which they developed so successfully during the war and at which the body snatchers have become outstandingly adept. Also new advances in surgery and other medical techniques has greatly fueled the increasing demand for this underground trade in transplantable tissues and organs, which has become a multi billion dollar a year industry among the unspeakable horrors linked to this trafficking is the mysterious disappearance of children off our american streets and along the border between the u.s and mexico now these abductions are a result of increased demands for transplantable tissues and organs which were coming before from the homeless children and the removable, removal of organs from condemned prisoners and political dissidents in third world countries and then quickly flown in ice chest overnight to the U.S. Now, right now, there are more than 200,000 veterans whose whereabouts are not known as they have become M. IA somewhere missing in America. Day after day, an average of 18 veterans mysteriously die and their deaths are being declared suicide or accidental because of a drug overdose from taking medications prescribed to them by the Department of Veteran Affairs. Tragically, every year, more than 6,500 veterans are mysteriously dying here in the United States, and their deaths are disgracefully being labeled as if they purposely ended their own lives and were victims of some kind of battle fatigue. I don't think their deaths were an accident. I think our government is doing this to them on purpose. They are well aware of the fact that as with the vets returning from Vietnam, the majority of our soldiers are against the corrupt war to control the world's oil and drugs. And they're afraid that, you know, when any of the soldiers return from any of the wars, a revaluation might break out in this country. And as a precaution, they are purposely giving them shots and drugs to make them become seriously ill so that they will feel so depressed and sick they want to kill themselves. Over 250,000 vets have reported having this undiagnosed illness and our government just pretends like it doesn't exist. More vets are mysteriously dying after returning home to the U.S. every year than died in the entire 10 years they spent fighting the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Now, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. The truth is our government doesn't give a crap about our soldiers. They just want to use people to do their dirty work, and if they die then salvage as many good potty parts as they can and throw away the rest. We need to stop this deliberate slaughter and genocide of our vets. In Los Angeles County alone, 12,000 homeless vets have mysteriously disappeared in the last four years. Could, could there be a secretive and systematic effort across the country to get rid of these veterans who are drug addicts, disabled, and homeless. Now, don't underestimate how evil, rich, and powerful our secret satanic government really is. That there is big money to be made in the illegal trafficking of something you can bet, rest assured, the Illuminati banksters, also known as the devil's offspring, are actively involved in it. The convenient disappearance of the homeless and illegal immigrants in the FEMA camps and the, camps and the selling of their body parts for huge profits is just 
business as usual. And you know, you guys, if you live near a FEMA camp and you know of one or two, go take a drive, go look, go see if there's people there. Check it out. We need people on the ground floor looking at this stuff. We need you. We need you to see how bad it is there. Now, we're talking about our government and being satanic and evil. Well, remember, these are the same evil men who orchestrated the fake drills on 9-11 and order our planes to stand down while they blew up the Twin Towers in Building 7 killing over 3,000 innocent victims that went down that day. But it's not including how many people died since then because of the air they breathed that was toxic. Now, they did this so they could totally bank up our country, wasting trillions and trillions of dollars on fighting a fake war against terror so that their privately owned corporations could control all the oil and drugs in the Middle East, which has resulted in the death of millions of innocent people. <sighs> now, if, again, if you um, remember your history, and I also believe that we do have Nazis that are in control of our government. Now, if you go back, Prescott Bush, which was George Bush, father and grandfather, he joined Skull and Bones, which is the Illuminati, in 1917. And Adolf Hitler joined the German Brotherhood of Death Society, also called the Skull and Bones, in 1919. And they selected Hitler to be their leader of the New World Order. And George Bush was inducted in 1948 and George W. Bush in 1968. And there's actually pictures of George Bush, um, some of the Nazi leaders. It's really in, in, interesting. And then it was said that on Arnold Schwarzenegger's belt buckle, he also wore the Nazi symbol. Now, <laughs> these are people that really run our country and they brag about it openly. Now, the large refrigerator buses at the FEMA camps are for transporting body parts, which they are selling all over the world for huge profits. Pictures of the camps built by KBR in Alaska and in many other states have thousands of plastic coffins stacked right outside the camps, which I would say is a little peculiar, don't you think? Why would they have a need to have thousands of plastic coffins stacked so close to the camps. If they were not planning to transport large numbers of dead bodies out of the camps. Now, one of the FEMA camps in Michigan, Camp Grayling, has over 500,000 plastic coffins. Now, like I said, where in the world, where are all the women and children disappearing to? Now, every year, thousands of young women and children mysteriously disappear from the face of the earth in America and across the world and are never found again. Most of them are homeless or strays or involved in sex or drugs and are pretty easy prey, but prey for whom? Besides the street pimps and drug pushers and family sellers, there's a whole other category of dealers in human trade who have their quarters deep underground. There's a whole underground hierarchy of slave owners from the reptilians to the Illuminati to common folk like you and me who are exploiting sometimes horrendously the innocence of young and lost human beings. It's our duty and responsibility to safeguard and redirect such as from otherwise falling into the clutches of an ungodly underground. Under the radar from the prying eyes of the public, cities also have made it legal to get rid of the homeless by passing laws 
that refrain citizens from distributing food to them in public places, and furthermore, not allowing them to reside in public places. Now, this has already begun in California and South Carolina and will only be a matter of time before it hits a city near you, Council Clear. Now, could this be a precursor to the government's depopulation agenda, starting with the homeless, which nobody pays attention to, right? Now, in Hawaii, at least on the Big Island, you know, you see somebody who's homeless and really down on the luck. If you've got something extra, you're expected to give it, to share, to help a hand. But to make it illegal to feed someone who does not have food, I think is very sinister and criminal. Now, shockingly, like we talked about, numerous homeless persons have been disappearing across the country and nobody seems to know where they're going or who is talking, taking them. Are they being rounded up? Has the government initiated their depopulation agenda, starting with the homeless? Has the government... You know, after all, the government has been known to use people as test sub- subjects unwillingly, and they did it with Project Chatter, Project Bluebird, and MK Ultra, to name a few. Are people really being shipped to relocation centers or FEMA camps for extermination? So again, like I said, I've gone back and did some research. So here again, this is just some things I pulled out. Again, San Francisco, more than a thousand others have disappeared from its welfare roles. And the Department of Human Services, which administers the program, has no idea they've gone. Los Angeles, Skid Row is missing 705 homeless people, according to a recent headcount by the LAPD. Central Division officers found that the number of homeless people dropped from 1,876 on September 18th to 1,171 six weeks later. Last Wednesday, there was a noticeable change on Skid Row. On a warm afternoon, the number of homeless encampments and people walking on the street appeared to have declined. Sacramento. In Sacramento, Union Pacific went and got a court order to throw out the homeless on their property. But when they showed up to throw them out, they were already gone. Now, well, the weird thing is, because I'm not going to say funny thing, because this is not funny, is that they left all their stuff. Now, a normal, uninformed person would say, hey, they were in a hurry and just left their stuff in the excitement. And, you know, have you ever met a homeless person? They never leave their stuff anywhere. You know, their stuff, like shopping carts filled with garbage, their tents, their blankets, is their life. And it's like us abandoning our children. Now, this is from Denver. And you'd think that with such a huge influx of people and wealth, Panhandlers would be all over the place trying to get as much money from the delegates, press, staff, and politicians as they possibly could. But they aren't there. They're not just invisible. They're gone. Now, again, in L.A., Estela Lopez's letter states that instead of an average 2,100 calls a month involving sick or mentally ill people, Last month, the Central City East Association received 729. Where did all the sick and mentally ill people go? Did they go to jail? Did they get dispersed to other parts of the city and county? You know, in all these instances, nobody knows. So Tacoma, Washington actually has a panhandling ban. And where did all they go? Did they go? It's extremely dramatic. Landenberg says with some surprise as her law's rapid success. One day we'd see a lot of people on the street corners. And then next day they were all gone. 
it appears that it was almost overnight. So, you know, you know, wherever you live, guys, you might want to start paying attention and start looking at the homeless and giving them. Because if you don't start and start paying attention, we're screwed. We could be next. If there is some sinister plot that is stealing the homeless for whatever reason, and you would think enough of these people are disappearing, and there's it's not one or two. We're talking thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Where are they going? And again, the government's reaction is, we don't know. You know, do you have homeless? Had you have homeless around you? Have you noticed that they're gone? Well, get your head out of your rear and start paying attention. I'm not asking you to give them food, money, love. Acknowledge that they're there or they are not there. And if you could write me, and you can write it through my website at www.angelitome.com, A-N-G-E-L-I-T-E-O-M.com, or you can write to me on Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn or even, you know, send me a little Twitter. What's going on in your city? Do you see less homeless people? And if you weren't paying attention, so you really said, well, God, I don't know. Well, pay attention now. And then look again in four or five days. Do you see the same faces? Are there less? Are there more? This is not hard. And if you find them disappearing, for right, bring it to my attention. Let's get that word out there. And again, if you live near a FEMA camp, Take a drive, but take a few people in the car with you, okay? There's more in numbers. And have all your cell phones charged up and a few cameras and all that good stuff. Go check out the FEMA camps. Are there people there? Who's running them? Are they American or are they foreign troops? Now, I've also heard rumors that there's foreign troops in all the FEMA camps. And there is that's how they do it. If they want to hurt a people... They're not going to put the troops in from that country because those troops, they have a bonding with those people. And the odds are that they're going to be nice or not do it at all because it's their people from their own country. Whereas if you put somebody else from another country, they are detached and they don't give a rat's ass. They will do what they're told. They will hurt or harm. It means nothing to them. That is why they are there. And probably why we send our troop all over the place to fight wars, because they're disassociated from those people. And they don't give, many of them don't give a rat's ass. And until they are reconnected to the creator and they realize that those people are their mother, father, sister, brothers, aunts, uncles. They're all friends. They're relatives. They are all one race. They are human beings. And you treat them differently. You treat people with kindness and love and compassion. And you refuse the bullets. You refuse to hurt or harm. Why do I fight so hard for enlightenment? Well, this is one big frigging example. And when we pop the world into enlightenment, all this other stuff falls into place. It all comes together. It is not hard. It's easy. People know better when they're connected to the creator and your awakened spiritual being. So join the Enlightenment Movement, which is Enlightenment Movement 2016 at Shutterfly.com. Check it out. We put on there daily prayers. So we could have that group energy work. The more people that join in, the quicker things will manifest. And I would rather manifest enlightenment 
and not Armageddon. I mean, oh, please, that is so overdone, don't you think? And, you know, keep chanting. May divine enlightenment descend down around everyone now. May divine enlightenment descend down around everyone now. May divine enlightenment descend down around everyone now. It makes a difference. It is changing the planet. We are moving forward. And we're going to talk about that in the second half, how things are not going well for Monsanto and how people are rebelling and making a difference. And it's about time. And to me, when you're going to hear what I have going to say next, do I believe that change is happening because of all the light work going on? Oh, hell yes. Else I wouldn't be putting energy into it. And how do you tell if you've been effective somewhere? Well, sometimes you do the work and you don't, you know, it just goes out there and however it's going to work or where it's going to affect is on the creator. But it'll come up and you will see how you've been effective on the planet or not been effective. And we got to take the wins as they come. Now, again, what you do with your energy makes a difference. We are countering the dark side and they're starting to lose. It is exciting. And I am so grateful that you join in and you help and you give energy to what we're doing, to light. That is going to shift it. And I also believe we can do it this year. That's the focus. It can happen. We can manifest. And if we don't, what's the alternative? Ooh, Armageddon. That doesn't work for me. I don't know about you guys. I want enlightenment. I want people to be kind and loving and be caring about the planet. And for the homeless to awaken and be reconnected to the creator so they become a conscious being again and they can move forward. And people are given the help they need. And we're taking care of the planet. That is enlightenment. Where people act out the best of what they are. And you see corporations like Man Monsanto start to go down. Down, down. So this is Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. And, you know, Revolution Radio is listener-sponsored, and we really appreciate the donations that you send in because it keeps everything going. And we're able to talk to you about stuff like Monsanto and, you know, God, the homeless. They're missing. Did you know that? You know, talk about it with other people. Bring it up again. If you don't talk about it, then these people... Have no voice. Be their voice. And Revolution Radio gives us the opportunity to get this information out to you. Nobody gets paid for what we're doing. We are all volunteers. And all the donations keep the station alive. Keep us on air. So go to Revolution Radio at Freedom's Lips and just check out their donation button and uh you know, push it. All donations are wonderfully accepted. It all adds up. And I always say, if you're kind of stuck financially, the way to help you move forward is to give. And that way you're creating space for the universe to come in and bring you abundance and get that energy flow really, really going. And they have some um, cool things that they also sell and, you know, check out their store. You know, it all supports the station. And again, we're very grateful for everything that, for all the support. And seed pikes are a really good way to make a donation and get something in return and learn to be self-sufficient. There are uh, three assorted packs of seeds. They're all organic. So that means you can save your seeds from year to year and replant and regrow. Wow, that's awesome. What kind of seeds? Are they, are they 
Oh, wow. Tell me more. Tell me more. (laughs) We have the uh, $200 pack, and it's got beans, melons, corn, all kinds of herbs, um, root vegetables, all kinds of nice greens, uh, everything you could possibly want. Cool. Wow. Yeah, I almost said seeds, so I like it when you just add your voice in. (laughs) (laughs) You usually do such a good job, I don't have to chime in. Oh, and on that note, you know, everybody, we're going to go on a short break, go get the glass of water, and then we're going to talk about Monsanto. Welcome back, everybody. That's why I always wait till the end. Um, this is Kathy Vilsky, the Quantum Leap Let Light Unite show on Revolution Radio. And this is the second hour of uh, the Quantum Leap. And this hour, we're going to talk about um, <laughs> Monsanto. Now, I know the first hour is probably... Um, pretty intense so we are going to talk about some positive stuff about what's happening to gmo and um now we're going to give out a really huge shout out to the brave um, state of vermont um now on december 15th 2007 a box of General Mills Cheerios is seen on a shelf at Shaw's Supermarket in Gloucester, Gloucester, Massachusetts. General Mills says it will start labeling products across the country that contain genetically modified ingredients to comply with a law that is set to go into effect in Vermont. The maker of Cheerios cereal, Progresso Soups, and Yo Play Yogurt notes it is impractical to label its products for just one state. So the disclosures required by Vermont starting July 2016 will be on all its products throughout the U.S. (laughs) What what do you think it's going to be, like a skull and bones? General Mills' announcement on Friday that it will start labeling products that contain genetically modified ingredients to comply with the Vermont law shows food companies might be throwing in the towel, even as they hold out hope Congress will find a national solution. (laughs) Yeah. Tiny Vermont is the first state to require such labeling effective July 1st. Its fellow New England states of Maine and Connecticut have passed laws that require such labeling. If other nearby states put one into effect, God, what cowards. Oh, my God. We'll do it, but only if the neighbor will. The U.S. Senate voted 48 to 49 Wednesday against a bill that would have blocked such state laws. Now, you have to, you know, like I said about does enlightenment and all the energy work work? Well, this is an example. The Senate actually did a good thing. You know, hold me up. They did not pass this law, and it was called the Dark Act. Now, General, the grocery, um, let's see, blah, 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 um, The food industry is holding out hope that Congress will prevent states from requiring such labels. (laughs) Oh, my God. Some companies say they plan to follow Vermont's law, while others are considering pulling their products from the small state. Either way, the state wins, right? Please remove your products from Hawaii. Oh, please, please, please beat me. You know, be, be awful to me. 
The Grocery Manufacturers Association has called for a national solution instead of what it says is a patchwork of confusing and costly state labeling laws and has also challenged Vermont's law in federal court, asking that the law be blocked until the case is resolved. That request was denied and is on appeal. I like that judge. Ooh. General Mills' announcement is the latest example of how Vermont's looming labeling mandate is a serious problem for businesses. The association said in a statement, food companies are being forced to make decisions on how to comply and having to spend millions of dollars. One small state's law is setting labeling standards for consumers across the company. Go Vermont, I go Vermont, I go Vermont. Nestle supports the mandatory informed disclosure of the presence of GMO ingredients in food and beverages and believes it's best done by a uniform national approach. Yeah, like a skull and bones label. We can have that uniform and national. I think that's a great idea but will abide by state laws if they come into effect, according to the spokeswoman, Edie Burge from Nestle. Food giant General Mills Incorporated said Friday it will start nationwide labeling on products that contain genetically modified ingredients, saying it's not practical to do so for just one state. I am glad it is impractical for them. Life is good. Campbell Soup Company is also printing new national labels in preparation for Vermont's law, although it opposes state-by-state labeling requirements. Yeah, because one state might get a little bit tougher. God. Now, Monsanto suffers a week of devastating defeats as lawmakers back away from biotech influence and intimidation. Now, Monsanto may hold a near monopoly on the world's seed supply, but it cannot control the minds, hearts, and voices of those who support and demand clean, healthy, and non-toxic food. Advocates have increasingly consolidated to create a powerful health food movement that's gained so much momentum, it is now deemed unstoppable. Yay! Now that is enlightenment moving forward. Now, this doesn't bode well for seed companies depending on crops laced with foreign DNA and coupled with noxious herbicides thanks to the tireless work of food and health activists, bloggers, and the indie media. The public is no longer in the dark about the health and environmental dangers of GMOs, and there is no reversing that opinion. Americans have shown overwhelming support for GMO labeling, a position reflected in the U.S. Senate yesterday after it blocked a controversial anti-consumer bill that would have preempted states' rights to pass GMO labeling laws as well as reverse existing legislation, such as that in Vermont, which is set to go into effect July 1, 2016. So in order to pass the Dark Act, (coughs) which is also called Deny Americans the Right to Know, which they needed 60 votes in the Senate, but it fell short, receiving only 49 yes votes and 48 no votes. Food and Water Watch says that all of the senators they pressured to vote against the Dark Act came through on Wednesday, including the following... And we will give a hand clap and bells and whistles to Debbie Stabenow, D. Michigan, Michael Bennett, D. Democrat, Colorado, Sherrod Brown, Democrat, Ohio, Robert P. Casey, Jr., Democrat, Pennsylvania, Amy Klobuchar, Democrat, Minnesota, Dick Durbin, Democrat, Illinois, Susan Collins, Hold your hat, a Republican from New Mexico or Maryland. And Tim Kaine, a Democrat from Virginia. 
The legislation legislation was essentially Monsanto's dream bill, as it would have put a permanent end to the expensive battles fought by them and other seed giants, as well as big food in several U.S. states trying to pass labeling laws. More than 70 GMO labeling laws have been proposed in 30 states thus far, with three states passing the legislation, including Maine, Connecticut, and Vermont. New Hampshire is on the verge of passing similar legislation and is set to vote on the measure before the month's end. Trouble in paradise. The agrochemical industry is facing yet another blow to its empire with the introduction of a national uniform GMO labeling law that, if passed, could lead to the creation of a national symbol that would clearly disclose the presence of genetically modified ingredients. Yeah, like the, you know, skull and bones, right? I think that would be a perfect label. So Monsanto is also facing trouble abroad. I mean, does this not just get better and better? This week, India's prime minister showed Monsanto the door amid complaints over its inflated prices on GM and cotton. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said Monsanto will lose its 90% dominance of the Indian market unless it agrees to reduce its seed prices. Now, I don't you know if you know and you're aware of the Indian market, but at one time they had this incredible diversified, all kinds of seeds for everything you can think of until Monsanto came in. And then, you know, they were making the farmers buy their seeds, which would re not, you know, then they made it illegal to, re, um, to save the seeds. I mean, we're talking satanic here. And then many, many, Farmers from India alone just committed suicide because they can't deal with it. So India cut the royalties paid by local firms for Monsanto seeds by nearly 70%, also capping GM and GM cotton seed prices at 800 rubies. Last year, the seeds were sold at prices from 830 rubies to over a thousand in different parts of the country. It's now upon Monsanto to decide whether they want to accept this rate or not. Sanjeev Kumar Balyan, the junior agriculture minister, if they don't find it feasible, then they're free to take a call. The greed of charging a premium has to end. Go India. God. We're not scared if Monsanto leaves the country because our team of scientists are working to develop an indigenous variety of GM seeds. Wow, that's awesome. So there we go. Monsanto is starting to lose big time. So before I get into the complete history of Monsanto, I want to do a little quick um, power prayer about Mother Earth regaining dominance over Monsanto. So just sit down, put your feet flat on the floor, put your hands up in the air like you're you're sending outward. And I want you to take a deep breath. And as you exhale, release everything that that no longer serves you. Feel yourself reconnect to the creator and all this divine high energy comes pouring into your body. All the way down your legs, out your feet, down your spine, down your arms and out your hands. And we're going to create this incredible bubble of light. And in this bubble of light, we're going to put the prayer, Mother Earth regaining dominance over Monsanto. So Mother Earth is dominant over anything created by Monsanto and companies Mother Earth is dominant over anything created by Monsanto and companies. Mother Earth is dominant over anything created by Monsanto and companies. I called Michael the Archangel to cut all ties to all who create any any kind of genetically modified anything on the planet, including all black magicians giving GMOs life and energy to everyone working at any kind of Monsanto facility, including all ETs, reptilians, reptilian hybrids, or humans, from the thought of their GMO lab-created inventions being dominant 
Overall, God created elementals, including our food supply. This also includes whoever first thought of the idea to the money backers, lab scientists, all helpers, tax and secretaries, all the way down to the cleanup crew. See all oaths, vows, wishes, dreams, and any overlays connecting all of the above to each other being removed from each other now. See this energy between them being dissolved by the violet flame and replaced with the human traits of love, compassion, kindness, and a love for the earth and humankind. We ask that all those who are trying to take GMO forward to step forward in the light of God and choose to stop realizing as they reconnect to the creator what they have done and do all they can to reverse the damage to the earth. If they choose to continue to do harm to the planet, which is their free will, we ask the creator and their guardian angel to put them all in positions of harmlessness. We cut ties to all their money sources and funding, redirecting it to all that are trying to save and help the earth heal. I see everything connected to Monsanto falling apart. Everything on all levels, cars, planes, all farm and lab equipment, computers, GMO seeds, sand, animals, all communication devices and all world domination plans, all lawsuits against any organic farmer crumbling as we speak. Monsanto also being forced out of all government positions and blocked from phoning, lobbying or donating money to any elected official. See Monsanto being removed from the FDA. See Monsanto not only losing all military government contracts with their private army, but have to disband it. See all countries removing them from their spaces and making them accountable for what they've done. See all countries making Monsanto accountable now. See all countries making Monsanto accountable now. See all countries making Monsanto accountable now. I now call to the creator, cosmic beings, divas, angels, and all life forms to join as one group to help us recharge all the elementals, air, earth, fire, and water that creates our mother earth. I call to all crystals on the planet and ask that they now amplify the DMT of all plants and all animal life forms, allowing everything to reconnect to the creator as this happens See all plants, animals, and all life forms remembering their divine blueprint for perfect health. See Mother Nature remembering that she has dominance on the planet. See all plants becoming stronger as they reconnect to the creator so no GMO alteration can affect it. See Mother Nature regaining her strength as we also release her from all traumas she has taken on. Now see Mother Nature taking back the planet in a gentle, kind, loving way. See her natural God seed blowing on to all GMO crops and changing the GMO back to its natural state. We see all GMO seed dying out and refusing to grow. We call to the goddess of truth to bring up to the surface where all the GMO crops are so they may be burned down and replanted with God-made seed. We now see everything GMO lose its resistance to Mother Nature and being overjoyed so that it now can go back to its natural state. We also send the planet healing energy to all fault lines that are in stress. We send the violet flame through these areas, transmuting all built-up energy in a gentle kind way. We see all the earth gently ratcheting herself in many small movements. We ask that all earthquake prophecies are neutralized with stronger positive thoughts that form around calm and peace. Now, the only way we want those GMO crops to be burned down is after they have gotten injunctions by the court and that they have been given permission. Now, Mother Earth is dominant over anything created by Monsanto and companies. Mother Earth is dominant over anything created by Monsanto and companies. Mother Earth is dominant over anything created by Monsanto and companies. We give energy to all organic farmers. May the creator fill all their hearts' desires, including attorneys who are are divinely inspired on how to win against Monsanto. We see organic farmers protected and winning against Monsanto. And the farmers the organic farmers becoming prosperous. Now, nevertheless, not our will, but thy will be done. So be it. So take a deep breath and release this bubble to manifest and 
to happen. Whew. I hope that was as good for you as it was for me. So let's get into the complete history of Monsanto, the world's most evil corporation. Of all the megacorps running amok, Monsanto has consistently outperforms its rivals, earning the crown as most evil corporation on earth, not content to simply rest upon its throne of destruction. It remains focused on newer, more scientifically innovative ways to harm the planet and its people. As true champions of evil, they won't stop until, well, until they're stopped. But what is Monsanto and how do they get to be so obscenely evil in the first place? I think that's the best place to start this journey. So grab a few non-GMO snacks, your beverages, a few stokies, your joints, and let's go for a ride in the deep, murky sewers of their dark past. So in 1901, the company is founded by John Francis Queenie, a member of the Knights of Malta, 30-year-old pharmaceutical veteran married to Olga Mendez Monsanto, for which Monsanto Chemical Works is named. The company's first product is called Chemical Saccharin, sold to Coca-Cola as an artificial, artificial sweetener. Even then, the government knew saccharin was poisonous and sued to stop its manufacture, but lost in court, thus opening the Monsanto Pandora's box to begin poisoning the world through the soft drink. Now, in the 1920s, Monsanto expands into industrial chemicals and drugs, becoming the world's largest maker of aspirin. Acid, um, some kind of acid... Tillicyclic, oh God, acid, toxic, of course. I can't even pronounce it. I mean, God. This is also the time when things begin to go horribly wrong for the planet in a hurry. With the introduction of their polychlorinated biphenols, or also known as PCBs. PCBs were considered an industrial wonder chemical, an oil that wouldn't burn impervious to degradation, and had almost limitless applications. Today, PCBs are considered one of the gravest chemical threats on the planet, widely used as lubricants, hydraulic fluids, cutting oils, waterproof coatings, and liquid sealants. The potent carcinogens and and have been implicated in reproductive, developmental, and immune system disorders. The world's center of PCB manufacturing was Monsanto's plants on the outskirts of East St. Louis, Illinois, which has the highest rate of fetal death and immature births in the state. Even though PCBs were eventually banned after 50 years for causing such devastation, It is still present in just about all animal and human blood and tissue cells across the globe. Documents introduced in court later showed Monsanto was fully aware of the deadly effects, but criminally hid them from the public to keep the PCB gravy train going full speed. In 1930s, Monsanto created its first hybrid (coughs) seed corn and expands into detergents, soaps, industrial cleaning products, synthetic rubbers, and plastics. Oh, yes, all toxic, of course. Now, it gets even better. We're going to jump to the 1940s. They began research on uranium, to be used for the Manhattan Project's first atomic bomb, which would later be dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing hundreds of thousands of Japanese, Korean, and U.S. military servicemen and poisoning millions more. The company continues its unabated killing spree by creating pesticides for agriculture containing deadly dioxin which poisons the food and water supplies. Was later discovered Monsanto 
failed to disclose that dioxin was used in a wide range of their products because doing so would force them to acknowledge that it had created an environmental hell on earth. So let's jump to the 50s. In 1950, Monsanto was closely aligned with the Walt Disney Company. What, you say? I said Walt Disney. You know, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, all those little cutesy people. Yeah. Well, Monsanto creates several attractions at Disney's Tomorrowland, exposing, exposing the glories of chemicals and plastics. Their house of the future is constructed entirely of toxic plastic that is not biodegradable, as they had asserted. What? Monsanto lied? Oh, my God. I'm shocked. After attracting a total of 20 million visitors from 1957 to 1967, Disney finally tore the house down, but discovered it would not go down without a fight. According to Monsanto magazines, wrecking balls literally <laughs> bounced off the glass fiber reinforced polyester material, torches, jackhammers, chainsaws, and shovels did not work. Finally, choker cables were used to squeeze off parts of the house bit by bit to be trucked away. Wow. All right, let's jump to the 1960s. I mean, doesn't this just get better and better? I mean, evil and more evil. Now, Monsanto, along with chemical partner in crime, Dow Chemical, produces dioxin-laced Agent Orange for use in the U.S.'s Vietnam invasion. The results? Over 3 million people contaminated. A half million Vietnamese civilians dead. A half million Vietnamese babies born with birth defects. And thousands of U.S. military veterans suffering, suffering or dying from its effects to this day. A matter of fact, it wasn't up until I think last year that uh, the government finally acknowledged that um, the veterans from the Vietnam War could be sick from Agent Orange. Wow. I mean, the ones that are still alive. So Monsanto is hauled into court again, and internal memos show that they knew the deadly effects of dioxin and Agent Orange when they sold it to the government. Outrageously, though, Monsanto is allowed to present their own research that concluded dioxin was safe and posed no negative health concerns whatsoever. Satisfied, satisfied the bought and paid for courts, side with Monsanto and throws the case out. Afterward, it comes to light that Monsanto lied about the findings and their real research concluded that dioxin kills very effectively. Well, why aren't they being taken back to court over this? Good Lord. A later, a later internal memo released in a 2000 trial admitted that the evidence provo provo proving the persistence of these compounds and their universal presence as residues in the environment is beyond question. The public and legal pressures to eliminate them to prevent global contaminations are inevitable. The subject is snowballing. Where do we go from here? The alternatives? Huh, go out of business. Sell the hell out of them as long as we can do and do nothing else. Try to stay in business. Have alternative products. 
Now, Monsanto partners partners with IG Farben. Now, they're the makers of Bayer Aspen and the Third Reich's go-to chemical manufacturer producing the deadly cyclone B gas during World War II. I mean, doesn't Monsanto just give you the warmth? Isn't this another... um, Halloween story. I mean, it's horror. These guys are nasty mofos. Satanic. God. So now Monsanto, along with IG Farben, together, the companies use their collective expertise to induce, introduce aspartame, another extremely deadly neurotoxin into the food supply. When questions surface regarding the toxicity of saccharin, Monsanto exploits this opportunity to introduce yet another of its deadly poisons onto an unsuspecting public. Which brings us to 1970. Monsanto now partner G.D. Searle produces numerous internal studies which claim aspartame to be safe. While the FDA's own scientific research clearly reveals that aspartame causes tumors and massive holes in the brains of rats before killing them, the FDA initiates a grand jury investigation into G.D. Searle for knowingly misrepresenting findings and concealing material facts and making false statements in regard to aspartame safety. Now, during this time, Searle strategically taps prominent Washington insider Donald Rumsfeld, who served as Secretary of Defense during the General For- Gerald Ford and George W. Bush presidencies to become CEO. The corporation's primary goal is to have Rumsfeld utilize his political influence and vast experience in the killing business to grease the FDA to play ball with them. A few months later, Samuel Skinner receives an offer he can't refuse, withdraws from the investigation and resigns his post at the U.S. Attorney's Office to go work for Searle's law firm. Now, this mob tactic stalls the case just long enough for the statute of limitation to run out, and the grand jury investigation is roughly and conveniently dropped. Boy, these guys are good, aren't they? All right, so let's go to 1980. Amid indisputable indisputable research that reveals the toxic effects of aspartame, and as then FDA Commissioner Dr. Jer Goyen was about to sign a petition into law, keeping it off the market. Donald Rumsfeld calls Ronald Reagan for a favor the day after he takes office. Reagan fires the uncooperative Goyen and appoints Dr. Arthur Hayes Hall to head the FDA, who then quickly tips the scales in Searle's favor, and NutraSweet is approved for human consumption in dried products. This becomes sadly ironic since Reagan, a known jelly bean and candy enthusiast, later suffers from Alzheimer's during his second term. One of the many horrific effects of aspartame consumption. Searle's real goal, though, was to have aspartame approved as a soft drink. Sweetener, since exhaustive studies revealed that at temperatures exceeding 85 degrees Fahrenheit, it breaks down into known toxins, dictopepperazines, DKP, methyl wood alcohol, and formaldehyde, becoming many times deadlier than its powdered form. The National Soft Drink Association, NSDA, is initially in an uproar 
fearing future lawsuits from consumers permanently injured or killed by drinking the poison. Duh. When Cyril is able to show that liquid aspartame, though incredibly deadly, is much more addictive than crack cocaine, the NSDA is convinced that skyrocketing profits from the sale of soft drinks laced with aspartame would easily offset any future liability. With that, corporate greed wins and the unsuspecting soft drink consumers pay for it with damaged health. Coke leads the way once again, remember saccharin, and begins poisoning Diet Coke drinkers with aspartame in 1983. As expected, sales skyrocket as millions become hopelessly addicted and sickened by the sweet poison served in a can. The rest of the soft drink industry likes what it sees and quickly follows suit, conveniently forgetting all about their initial reservations that aspartame is a deadly chemical. There's money to be made, lots of it, and that's all that really matters to them anyway. In 1985, undaunted by the swirl of corruption and multiple accusation of fraudulent research undertaken by Searle, Monsanto purchases the company and forms a new aspartame subsidiary called NutraSweet Company. When multitudes of independent scientists and researchers continue to warn about aspartame's toxic effects, <clears throat> Monsanto goes on the offense of bribing the Can National Cancer Institute for providing their own fraudulent papers to get the NCI to claim that formaldehyde does not cause cancer so that aspartame can stay on the market. <clears throat> Now, the known effects of aspartame ingestion are mania, rage, violence, blindness, joint pain, fatigue, weight loss, chest pain, coma, insomnia, numbness, depression, tinnitus, weakness, spasms, irritability, nausea, deafness, memory loss, rashes, dizziness, headaches, seizures, anxiety, palpitation, fainting, cramps, diarrhea, panic, burning in the mouth, diseases triggered, mimicked, including diabetes, MS, lupus, epilepsy, Parkinson's, tumors, Miscarriage, infertility, fibromyalgia, infant death, Alzheimer's, and source, that's the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Further, 80% of complaints made to the FDA regarding food additives are about aspartame, which is now in over 5,000 products, including diet and non-diet sodas and sports drinks, mints, chewing gums, frozen desserts, cookies, cakes, vitamins, pharmaceuticals, drink, milk drinks, Instant teas, coffee, yogurt, baby food, and many, many more. Read labels closely and do not buy anything that contains this contains aspartame. Amidst all the death and disease, FDA's Arthur Hill resigns under a cloud of corruption and is immediately hired by Searle's public relations firm as a senior scientific consultant. Nope, not a joke. Monsanto, the FDA, and many government health regulatory agencies have become one and the same. It seems the only prerequisite for becoming an FDA commissioner is that they spend time at either Monsanto or one of the pharmaceuticals, cartels, organized crime corporations. Now, in 1990, Monsanto spends millions defeating state and federal legislations that disallows the corporation's from continuing to dump dioxins, pesticides, and other cancer-causing poisons into the drinking water systems. Regardless, they are sued countless times for causing disease in their plant workers, the people surrounding areas, and birth defects in babies. With their coffins full from the massive billions of profits, the $100 million settlements are considered the low cost of doing business. And thanks to the FDA, Congress, and the White House, Business remains very good. So good that Monsanto is sued for giving radioactive iron to 829 pregnant women for a study to see what would happen to them. Is this sick? So in 1994, the FDA once again criminally approves Monsanto's latest monstrosity, the synthetic bovine growth hormone produced from a genetically modified E. coli bacteria. Despite obvious outrage from the scientific community of its dangers, of course, Monsanto claims that disease pus milk full of antibiotics and hormones is not only safe, but good for you. Worse yet, dairy companies refuse to use this toxic cow pus 
and labor their products as RBHGH free are sued by Monsanto, claiming it gives them an unfair advantage over competitors that did. In essence, what Monsanto was saying is, yeah, we know our BGH makes people sick, but it's not all right that you advertise it's not in your products. The following year, the diabolical company begins producing GMO crops that are tolerant to their toxic herbicide Roundup. Roundup Ready, canola oil, rapeseed, soybeans, corn, and BT cotton begin hitting the market. Advertise as being safer, healthier alternatives to their organic non-GMO rivals. Apparently, the propaganda work, and as today over 80% of canola on the market is their GMO variety. A few things you definitely want to avoid in your diet are GMO, soy, corn, wheat, and canola oil. Despite the fact that many natural health experts claim the latter to be a healthy oil, it's not. But you'll find it polluting many products on grocery store shelves. Because these GM crops have been engineered to self-pollinate, they don't need nature or bees to do that for them. So the very dark side agenda of this, and that is to wipe out the world's bee population. And you know that's happening with their shit. Monsanto knows that birds, and especially bees, throw a wrench into their monopoly due to their inability, um, their ability to pollinate plants, thus naturally creating foods outside of the company's full domination control agenda. When bees attempt to pollinate a GM plant or flower, it gets poisoned and dies. In fact, the bee colony collapse was recognized and has been going on since GM products were first introduced. To counter the accusations that they deliberately cause this ongoing genocide of bees, Monsanto devish, devilishly buys out Biologics, the largest bee research firm that was dedicated to studying the colony collapse phenomenon as who, and whose extensive research named the monster as the primary culprit. After that, it's bees. What bees? Everything's just dandy. Again, I did not make this up, but I wish I had. During the mid 19th 19- 90s, they decided to reinvent their evil company as one focused on controlling the world's food supply through artificial biotechnology means to reserve, preserve the Roundup cash cow from losing its market share in the face of competing less toxic herbicides. You see, Roundup is so toxic that it wipes out non-GMO crops, insects, animals, human health, and the environment at the same time. How efficient. Because Roundup Ready crops are engineered to be toxic pesticides, masquerading as foods they have been banned at the EU, but not in America. Is there any connection between that and that fact that Americans, despite the high cost of availability of health care, are collectively the sickest people in the world? Of course not. As was Monsanto's plan from the beginning, all non-Monsanto crops would be destroyed forcing farmers all over the world to use only its toxic terminator seeds. And Monsanto made sure farmers who refused to come into the fold were driven out of business or sued when windblown terminator seeds poison organic farms. Terminator seeds are not on the commercial market. Instead, farmers must sign binding agreements that they will not save seeds. This gave the company a virtual monopoly as Terminator seed crops and Roundup worked hard in glove with each other and as GMO crops could not survive as a non-chemical environmental environment. So farmers were forced, forced to buy both. The next step was to spend billions globally buying up as many seed companies as possible and transitioning them into Terminator seed companies in an effort to wipe out any rivals and eliminate organic foods off the face of the earth. Monsanto's view, all foods must be under their full control and genetically modified or they're not safe to eat. These guys are insane. They pretend to be shocked that their critics in the scientific community question whether crops genetically modified with the genes of disease, pigs, cows, spiders, monkeys, fish, vaccines, and viruses are healthy to eat. The answer to that question is obvious in a very big way. No way. It's quite okay, though, to force feed poor nations and Americans these modified monstrosities as a means to end starvation since dead people don't need to eat. I'll bet the thought of most people's minds these days that Monsanto is clearly focused on eugenics and genocide as opposed to providing foods that will stain the world 
As in Monsanto's partners, Disney Sleeping Beauty, the Wicked Witch gives the people the poison GMO apple that puts them to sleep forever. Now, in the 2000s, by this time, Monsanto controls the largest share of the global GMO market. In turn, the U.S. government spends hundreds of millions to fund aerial spraying of Roundup, causing massive environmental devastation. Fish and animals by the thousand dies within days of spraying as respiratory ailments, ailments and cancer deaths in humans spike tremendously. But this is all considered an unusual coincidence, so the spraying continues. If you thought Monsanto's and the FDA were one and the same, well, you can add the government to that. Sorry, list now. The monster grows bigger. Monsanto merges with Pharmacia and Upjohn, then separates from its chemical business and rebrands itself as an agricultural company. Yes, that's right. A chemical company's products have devastated the environment, killed millions of people and wildlife over the years, now wants us to believe their products safe and nutritious foods that won't, keep, won't kill people any longer. That's an extremely hard sell, which is why they continue to grow bigger through mergers and secret partnerships. Because rival DuPont is too large a corporation to be allowed to merge with, they instead form a stealth partnership where each agrees to drop existing patent lawsuits against one another and begin sharing GMO technologies for mutual benefit. In layman's terms, together they would be far too powerful and politically connected for anything to stop them from owning a virtual monopoly on agriculture, control the food supply, and you control the people. Not all as rosy as a monster is repeatedly sued for hundreds of millions for causing illness, infant deformities, and death while illegal dumping all matter of PCBs into groundwater and continually lying about product safety. You know, business as usual. The monster often pers perseveres and pr proves it difficult to slay as it begins filing frivolous suits against farmers it claims infringe on their terminator seed patents in virtually all case, cases unwanted seeds are wind blown on the farmers lands by neighboring terminated seeded farms not only do these horrendous destroy the organic farms crops the lawsuits drive them to bankruptcy while the supreme court overturns lower court rulings and sides with Monsanto each time. Surprise, surprise. At the same time, the monster begins filing patents on breeding techniques for pigs, claiming animals breed any way remotely similar to a, their patent would grant them ownership. <laughs> so loose was this patent filing that it became obvious they wanted to claim all pigs bred throughout the world would infringe upon their patent. We are talking insane, satanic people. The global terrorism spreads to India as over 100,000 farmers who are bankrupted by GMO crop failure commit suicide by drinking Roundup. So their families will be eligible for death insurance payments. In response, the monster takes advantage of the situation by alerting the media to a new project to assist small Indian farmers by donating the very things that cause crop failures in the country in the first place. Ford's then names Monsanto Company of the Year. Oh, my God, they are such in bed with each other, huh? But then again, if you look at, um, you know, Forbes is actually a satanic company. Well, then Satan just gave, you know, Satan an award. More troubling is that Whole Foods, the corporation that brands itself as organic, naturally, nat natural and eco-friendly, is proven to be anything but. They refuse to support Proposition 37, California's GMO labeling measure that Monsanto and its GMO brethren eventually helped to defeat. However, when over 20 biotech-friendly companies, including Walmart, PepsiCo, and ConAgra, recently met with FDA in favor of mandatory labeling laws, this after fighting tooth and nail to defeat property th Proposition 37, Whole Foods sees an opportunity to save face 
and becomes the first grocery chain to announce mandatory label of their GMO products in 2018. And if you think it peers have suddenly grown a conscious, think again. They are simply reacting to the public's outcry over the defeat of proper Proposition 37 by crafting deceptive GMO labeling laws to circumvent any real change. This is keeping the status quo intact. To add insult to injury, Monsanto and their partners in crime, Archer Dan- Daniels, Midland, Sodexco, and Tyson Foods, write and sponsor the Food Modernization Act of 2009, H.R. 875. This criminal act gives the corporate factory farms a virtual virtual monopoly to police and control all foods grown anywhere, including one's own backyard, and provides harsh penalties and jail sentences for those who do not use chemicals and fertilizers. President Obama decided this sounded reasonable and gave his approval. With this act, Monsanto claims that only GM foods are safe and organic, and organic or home-grown foods potentially spread disease, therefore must be regulated out of existence for the safety of the world if eating GM pesticide balls is their ideas of safe food. I would like to think the rest of the world is smart enough to pass. And further revelations have broken open regarding this evil giant's true intentions. Monsanto crafted the ridiculous H.R. 933 Continuing Resolution, a.k.a. Monsanto Protection Act, which Obama robo signed into law as well. This law states that no matter how harmful Monsanto's GM crops are and no matter how much devastation they wreck upon the country, U.S. federal courts cannot stop them from continuing to plant them anywhere they choose. Yes, Obama signed a provision that makes Monsanto above any laws and makes them more powerful than the government itself. We have to wonder who's really in charge of the country because it's certainly not him. There comes a tipping point, though, when a corporation becomes too evil and the world pushes back hard. Many countries continue to convict Monsanto of crimes against humanity and have banned them altogether telling them to get out and stay out. The world has begun to awaken to the fact that the corporate monster does not want control over the global production of food simply for profit's sake. Now it's become clear over a century of death and instruction that the primary goal is to destroy human health and the environment, turning the world into a mon-satanic hell on earth. Cancel clear. Research into the name itself reveals it to be Latin, meaning my saint, which may, which may explain why critics often refer to it as Mon Satan. Even more conspiratorially, interesting is that Freemasons and other esoteric societies assign numbers to each letter in our Latin-based alphabet system in a sixth system. Under that Number system, what what might Monsanto add up to? Why 666, of course. Well, know that all is not lost. Evil always loses in the end once it's widely exposed to the light of truth, as is now occurring. The fact that the Monsanto-led government finds it's necessary to enact desperate legislation to protect its true leader, proves this point. Being evicted elsewhere, the United States is Monsanto's last stand, so to speak. And even here, many have begun striking back by protesting against and rejecting GMO monstrosities, choosing to grow their own foods and shop at local farmers' market. Instead of the Monsanto, the Monsatan, supported corporate groceries change. The awakening people are also beginning to see that they have been misled by the corporate tricksters and federal federal government criminals poisoned by too much power, control, and greed, which has resulted in the creation of a monstrous, out-of-control corporate beast. And that takes us to the end. And have a lovely week. Have a nice 
tomorrow with the full moon and uh, the equinox. Aloha.